Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love these watches, everything on this program is for sale. Tmaso at thewatchbox.com is your purchase and pricing email address for your questions about any watch you see here. Some of the prices are unlisted, some of them are below in the description, but I can answer all of your questions at Tmaso at thewatchbox.com. We are also looking to trade and purchase, buy, trade, or sell. One watch or an entire collection, we will buy your entire collection, paying fast, paying cash, no upper limit on value paid. If you wish to buy, trade, or sell, all roads lead to tmaso at thewatchbox.com. I promised you a big piece, and in terms of stature, I am going to deliver. 41 may not be big, objectively, but it is the largest ever Oyster Perpetual. Relaunched for last year in a 41 millimeter case for the first time ever, this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 124300. 41 millimeters in 904L stainless steel. The watch has been nicknamed the Tiffany because the dial color, which is officially turquoise, is a lovely blue lacquer that reflects not only Rolex's history of Stella dial, lacquer dial watches, but also the long-term association between Rolex and one of its former vendors, Tiffany of the United States. So while this is not a Tiffany dialed watch, it's definitely a Tiffany colored watch. The hands, indices, and crown are 18 karat white gold, and there is plenty of Rolex chromolite blue loom on this dial. The watch is 100 meters water resistant with oyster case. We've known the oyster case since 1926 and the combination of the oyster case with the perpetual self-winding system since 1933. It is a long running classic. This watch could be considered the most elemental and traditional of Rolex models. Now there are some changes. Not only is it now 41 millimeters, but we get for the first time on the oyster perpetual, the easy link five millimeter adjustment system. So you've got that five millimeter in out snap in snap out tool free adjustment we've got removable links fixed by screws and that on both sides you've got a couple of removable links uh, tops are satinated flanks are polished the case is simple smooth flat and broad and on the wrist it really wears more like a tonneau case these days as it gets larger it starts to look less like a round watch and bring out some of the cushion case aspects of the oyster case design long-term viewers are going to remember my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference so you have a good sense of scale here now inside the case we have another change for this generation now a 70 hour power reserve it's still a chronometer we have caliber 3230, 70 hour power reserve, Kroner G escapement, bigger mainspring, hacking second, still anti-magnetic, still shock tolerant, uh, still a Rolex manufacturer movement as they all are these days. So this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41. It has become a big deal. But for every watch that appreciates and becomes tougher to obtain due to price, there is always a watch that depreciates and represents a significant discount from retail and great value for those who think well differently. This is a lovely 39 millimeter white gold blue lacquer dial Breguet Type 20 and this is the transatlantique with the date. So it is the 3820 in white gold. A lot to love here. You can see that although the hands are service replacement in Luminova, the dial itself is original factory tritium. So this is a real tritium fade. We have a big eye style oversized minutes register for the chronograph. And the chronograph, based on the Le Mania 1350, is a flyback. Automatic winding with a 48-hour power reserve. It's also water resistant down to 100 meters, which is uncommon for pilot style watches. And of course, the Breguet Type 20, named after the French military contract issued in 1954, the Type 20 contract. While other companies did build Type 20 chronographs, Breguet was the longest persisting and best remembered of the Type 20 manufacturers. This watch has been a key part of the collection since the 50s, and thus this is Breguet's Moon Watch. This is Breguet's Submariner. This is Breguet's 50 Fathoms. And as you can see, it comes with a full deployant clasp. The watch, of course, includes a bi-directional rotating aviation bezel so you can use it for timing even as the chronograph runs. Also note the watch has both faded numerals and tritium and applique polished indices outboard. Now I mentioned the 50 fathoms. Let's talk about the 50 fathoms. 50 times 2. We've got the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Tribute to Mill Spec that came out in 2017 as a 500 piece edition. This is stainless steel 40.3 millimeters and it's a dedicated ode to the 50 fathoms of the early to late 1950s. This is another watch that was built uh, for the, na the Nageur de Combat, which is a combat swimmers division within the French military. And of course, Bob Maloubier and Claude Riffaut helping to lay down the 
technical specifications of what would beat Rolex to market by a few months and become the trendsetter as the prototype of the modern day dive watch. By the late 1950s, the mil-spec model, as you see right here, become quite common in militaries with features such as a rotating dive style bezel and a a humidity detector that would change color to become a monotone on the dial should water intrusion occur. Now let's talk a little bit about this guy right here. This is actually technically the more audacious of the two. A watch that came out in 2016. This is the Ocean Commitment Chronograph. It's the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Ocean Commitment Chronograph. So 43 millimeters in scratch resistant blue ceramic with a gray ceramic bezel and impressively a full ceramic scratch resistant buckle. That's both buckle and pin. Uh, the watch includes a lovely uh, anthracite sunburst metallic dial. It is a flyback chronograph. It is a dive watch with a unidirectional rotating bezel and 300 meter water resistance. Of course, the Bathyscap, a simplified case design compared to the reference 5008 you just saw, as well as the uh, 45 millimeter 5015. This is reference five. Uh, this is actually reference 5200. So 5200, 5000 is the standard Bathyscap. Uh, the watch features a 120 click bezel with a nice refined feel and detent. Let's do a quick loom shot here. Well loomed, and then we'll jump over to the mill spec, which features a fully loomed bezel because this includes the modern 50 Fathoms sapphire capped bezel. The bezel can be loomed all the way around and the loom is not at risk of being scratched off because it's capped by sapphire. Now jumping back to the 50 Fathoms bathyscaphe, flyback chronograph. Take a look at the case back. F385. You can see there's a lot going on. F385 is a very ambitious movement. Adjusted in six positions with a 50-hour power reserve. It has an El Primero-like 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate. It also has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, a full balance bridge, and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance, and elements like nods to the Lamborghini partnership that ran for a decade at Blancpain. You can see that the terminal end of the drivetrain is actually cut in the shape of an Aventador wheel. Uh, there is a column wheel for function cycling and a vertical clutch system for smooth and efficient engagement without jumping. It includes hacking seconds and a quick set date. As you can see, it's beautifully finished with anglage a mile wide on the bridges. You can see the winding system bridges feature that lovely mirrored bevel and so do the bridges below it. All the screw heads are black polished. You can see that there is engine turning on the base plate. We have this lovely sort of satin, deep textured grain brushed across the surfaces of the bridges, which is a more contemporary finish style than Cote de Genève. And then you can see the rotor features a media blasted recesses that are PVD'd in blue. And then we have a lovely brushed surfacing across the top with a mirrored bevel on the edge. So this is a triple finished rotor and very impressive. It's a 250 piece limited edition. This is number 58 right here. We'll throw it on the wrist. Being 43 millimeters, it's large, but being ceramic and sapphire for the most part, it's also very light. I could wear it well. I think you need a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to wear it, but it sits very light on the wrist. Now, of course, I wanted you to be able to see the case back of this uh, 50 Fathoms mill spec. And you can see that it too is handsomely finished. This is this is a 96 to 100 hour power reserve, so four days plus. It's been converted with a, a free sprung balance and a silicon hairspring. It too is adjusted in six positions. You can see it's based on the Frederic Piguet 1150. It's got twin mainspring barrels. The, Anglage is just as nicely done, but as you can see, it features a more traditional Cote de Genève across its, its surfacing. Number 96 of 500, this too is 300 meters water resistant. We'll do a quick wrist shot here. And this, this isn't quite a NATO strap because it doesn't use the swan's neck clinching system. It uses a conventional pin buckle, but I will throw it on my wrist and you'll get a quick sense of how this reference 5008, which is 46 millimeters from lug to lug actually wears. You can see it's nowhere near the edge of my wrist. Uh, this is really a dive watch option for men and for women who love watches. Okay, so let's talk about less being more. Sometimes less is more, and that's what Richard Mule declared back in 2011 when it launched the RM33. So this watch is broad. It's 45.7 millimeters in diameter in rose gold, but as my calipers measure, it's only seven millimeters thick. Now you can see there's a lot of nuance to the case. We have a combination of recesses. We have polished elements, satinated elements. We have the uh, polished spline screws. 
We also have blackened spline screws. The strap is integrated, and you can see it actually traces the hollows of the case flank. There's a shoulder for the crown that is black ceramic. We have a leaf spring activated, double deployment clasp. This is the clasp system built by GNF Chatelain for Richard Mille. And you can see we have the spline screws and evacuated profiles here as well. The dial reveals a movement that is made of grade 5 titanium and skeletonized. We have a flange outboard in carbon fiber that features the hour indices. You can see the hands at center are faceted, polished, and satinated in rose gold. The watch is fairly well loomed. It is a sports watch. And then you can see that there are two sapphires, one over the dial, and then there's one underneath that features the numerals printed on it. And you can see it's cut out in sort of egg-like form or an ellipsoid surrounding the motion works and the hands at center. On the reverse side, you can see there is a micro rotor automatic based on a Vauche caliber. A 40 to 42 hour power reserve. You can see it's free sprung for durability. All of this is titanium so that the sprung mass can be reduced. And then there are four little mounting points. Each one features a little rubber donut to help isolate the movement from the shock of the case. This is a fun watch, but it's big. At almost 46 millimeters in diameter, it's large. That said, because of the shape, which you can see is cambered and arced, it actually fits even a little better than RM's well-known and easy-fitting tonneau cases. So if your wrist is the size of mine, 16 centimeters circumference, you can definitely wear this watch. And because it's so thin, it'll fit underneath a dress cuff. This watch, however, will not. Launched in 2011, in a limited edition of 1,000 pieces, this is the PAM 382, so this is the original Bronzo. Uh, the watch is made of bronze with an olive green dial designed to evoke the military heritage of Panerai, and the bronze is designed to reference the nautical heritage of Panerai. Now you can see it is in the 1950 case, it's 47 millimeters in diameter, it uses the conventional screws and bars that have been a long-standing Panerai tradition on its better watches. The bezel is 60 click, but it is remarkably loud, which is wonderfully endearing because it feels chunky, meaty, and substantial. We have the locking lever system within the crown. Now it's unlocked. Now it's locked. It's a wonderful system created in the late 40s and then equipped in the early to mid 50s by Panerai on its combat watches. The idea was to limit the amount of times you had to thread the crown in and out. Back then they were manual wind. This one, as you could see, is not. It features caliber P9000. 3000 would be the manual wind equivalent, but the P9000, as you could see, features a free sprung balance for durability, twin mainspring barrels, three days of power reserve, and actually it features a, a quick set system that allows you to quickly and easily easily change your time zone as you travel east or west. The watch also includes a hacking or stop seconds function. And of course, we have lovely rose gold hands and rose gold indices and a little bit of an off-white loom. Absolutely miles of smiles when you loom check this one. Uh, so much luminescence. And you can see even the crosshair small seconds has been loomed. Now the watch, of course, heavily water resistant down to 300 meters with a titanium case back and the locking lever system also offers you more protection than a shouldered crown guard because uh, remember you could still hit a shouldered crown guard straight on here you have a f all aspect protection uh, plus you also have a system that's easy to manipulate if your hands are wet sweaty or gloved it's easier to unlock and relock your crown you won't be threading the crown through the crown seals and of course it's tough to actually jump in the water with the crown unlocked that's hard to miss whereas a screw down crown can be out a few turns. One of the most important watch designs of the last 22 years, really one of the great designs of the 21st century. If you ask where the modern era of bronze watches came from, it's this exact model. This is the Bronzo, not a Bronzo. Okay, jumping into the world of F.P. Journ and discontinuation, here we have a watch that's termed Pink on Pink on Pink by Journ Guys. It's the third series chronomet de resonance, and as you can see, it has a 40 millimeter rose gold case with a pink gold dial and a pink gold movement. You can also see a rarity on this third generation. This one actually features the Eleanor made case. So what's likely is that this case sat around quite a few years before it was cased up as a watch because the Eleanor French made cases uh, ceased in about mid 2000 
2008 when Jorn bought the factory and moved it to Geneva. So this is an interesting and rare combination of the pink on pink on pink in a third series resonance with an Eleanor case. It's the only one like this that I've seen. Now the dial, of course, is made of solid gold. This is the case in the movement. So this is a 40 millimeter watch, but it's weighty. You can see it features black polished bezels framing the 24 hour scrolling time display. And of course, this third generation res introduced that scrolling 24 hour display so you could use it as a true travel time watch with a reference time that distinguishes between day and night. And then you could set the two time zones independently. So it still works as a dual time and a travel time, though that's not really what the resonance is about. Now, resonance takes about seven to 10 minutes to take effect, which means that the seconds hands may not be synchronized once resonance couples them together. So you have a flyback mechanism. You pull the little trigger down at four o'clock and you actually wind and set the watch with the bullhead winder at the top. The power reserve indicator actually moves backwards towards zero as you wind it, just like a marine chronometer would. So that's a little reference to horological history by Monsieur Jean. And then you can see on the reverse side, the movement is made of solid gold. Bridges and plates, 18 karat rose gold, two barrels, two drivetrains, two escapements, two large balances, free sprung and adjusted in six positions. There is no physical coupling between them, but they are coupled by resonance. So they beat in opposition, that is against each other, but in sync. So if one slows down, the other speeds it up and vice versa. It is a self-regulating resonance chronometer system, and they should really stay within five seconds of each other every 24 hours. The watch has a simple pin buckle and a very attractive handmade Parisian Jean Rousseau strap. We'd like to order custom Jean Rousseau straps for Jean watches because we can control the color used and they're also the OEM strap supplier to Jorn, so it's the same thing as factory. On the wrist, it's a wonderfully compact watch, 48 millimeters from lug to lug and quite flat. It wears well, including underneath a tight cuff. So this is a great watch for him or for her, really. It is a unisex option. And it's also a watch if you must fit it underneath a sleeve for formal use, a wonderful companion if you must travel. And if you're gonna own a Jorn and you're gonna own just one Jorn, it really should be a CB, a Resonance, or a Tourbillon Souverain. Those are the core models, and this is a great one. The Resonance 3 is actually my favorite generation of Resonance Jorn. Here's another one of those watches that represents great value. We talk about Nautilus, Aquanaut, Steel Rolex, the Royal Oaks, even the overseas these days, getting a little bit played out. But something like this from Jeger Le Coult represents great value, both in the way it looks and the way it works. This is the geophysic universal time. So basically it is the geophysic true second with the deadbeat system. And then they add a world time display. Now you can see that the dial uh, actually features lovely metallic satinated land masses and then a lovely lacquered fade. So it fades from silver at the poles to a deep rich blue at the equator. So this is the northern hemisphere here. We have applique indices. The watch is loomed and I'm going to show you that right here. As you can see, it's a watch you can read in the dark. The loom is ever so slightly uh, tinted ecru or off-white. You can see that the loom plots are mounted on a chapter ring, not on the dial, but it's actually part of the case. This is a reference to the original geophysic of 1958, which featured the loom plots on the underside of the sapphire. So this watch came out the year after the Tribute to Geophysic re-edition watch, so it includes the handsome lug profile and case shape from that, but it's 42 millimeters in stainless steel, and it includes this world time complication that allows you to easily read the time in 24 principal time zones. Uh, you can also see where it's day and night because the chapter ring with the 24 hours is bifurcated. You have blue and silver representing day and night. And if you wish, you can set that local time independently. Now the watch does include hacking seconds and it's a deadbeat second system. It includes the caliber 772, which is a manufacturer movement that includes a number of elements. You can actually see there's a little hairspring mechanism that underpins the deadbeat. You can see that underneath through a skeletonized portion of the bridge that sits above. We have a fired blue screws. We actually have a full balance bridge with a free sprung index. So it's very shock tolerant. It's built like a Rolex movement. You can see if you look carefully that the balance is actually two interlocking a JL logo. See that little JL? It's not a it's not a balance wheel. It's a balance yoke. They call that gyro lab because it's based on the balance design from the 2007 Master Compressor Extreme Lab concept watch. And uh, the interesting thing is, if you look, you can see that JL logo. And, and that is literally the shape of the end profile of the balance. So lots to love here. This is a very precise, durable and feature-packed watch. You can also appreciate that the watch includes a uh, 
latest generation JLC deploying clasp, and if you look carefully, you can see it says push here. You can release the clasp without a tool from the strap, so it is just chock a block with clever features. Throw it on the wrist, and at 42 millimeters, it's broad, but it's also quite thin. It's only 12 millimeters thick. So this is a handsome watch, and the lacquered dial is to die for. It includes a bunch of cool time-telling refinements that set it apart, not just from other brands' watches, but even from other JLC Master Sports watches. Remember, this is from the Geophysic Collection. It's not a conventional master. Okay, two from Rolex. Two relatively underrated Rolex watches from underrated Rolex families. Of course, this is the pre-2016 version of the Rolex Air King. It's 34 millimeters and includes the wonderfully endearing concentric dial. So we have these deep concentric grooves at the center. Then we, and you see they're chromed and polished. Then we have this round robin printing. Normally Rolex writes altogether too much on its dials. Even this four line dial is a bit much. And you can see it's, it's almost universal across Rolex watches. Whereas right here, Rolex, prints Rolex and Air King, and then officially certified Oyster Perpetual Superlative Chronometer. It's a round robin ring of the dial. We have these radially arrayed Arabic numerals, black bounded with an orange fill, and then this sunburst across the hour and minute track that radiates out from an imaginary center point at the middle of the dial. We have a white gold applied Rolex crown and a white gold applied inverted six. And though it's a 34 millimeter watch, it wears like a 36. And again, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. This is a really good fit for me. I would happily wear this. It is by no means too small, and being 100 meters water resistant, automatic winding, a chronometer, anti-magnetic, and shock tolerant, there is a lot to love here. Rolex packs a lot of aesthetic and technical content into this relatively simple three-hand steel watch. All right. 36 millimeters is a more traditional Rolex size, as it's been seen on the Oyster Perpetuals, the date justs, and yes, the day dates. And that's what we have right here. Uh, this is a rose gold day date with black lacquer dial. Let me grab my polishing cloth here. Now you can see it is a lovely 118205 in rose gold. The dial is a lustrous and deep black lacquer with gilt golden printing, radially arrayed rose gold Arabic numerals, double quick set, 100 meters water resistant, and this is an unconventional look for the day date. As you can see, it has that radial dial with radially arrayed Arabic numerals on black lacquer. It has a domed bezel rather than fluted, and it has the oyster bracelet rather than the president. This is a remarkable unusual and punchy take on the day date. Now note, it still has the crown clasp. It doesn't use an oyster clasp. On the wrist, uh, the combination of the red gold case and the black gloss dial has a deep impact. It makes a profound impression, despite not being a big watch. Uh, this is another one of those unisex options, and it represents a real power watch. Uh, the day date is not the most common Rolex, not in our era, an obsession with stainless steel. And this is not the most common day date. If you were to buy this, you would get the best of both worlds, Rolex reliability, history, heritage, and integrity, but without the duplicate phenomenon and the Clone Wars mentality that can come from wearing a sub, a GMT, or a Daytona in a Rolex-heavy office or club. This is a Rolex that preserves its individuality. A lot of folks tell me that they love 90s Roger Dubuis, but they hate the company's current offerings. And there is something to be said for the early models like the Condottiere, the Sympathy, and the Homage. This is the first generation Sympathy 37 in white gold. It is a 28 piece limited edition. As you can see, this is number eight. The watch in a 37 millimeter white gold case features the Sympathy One profile, which is to say it features a case with this lovely fluid form, but then the inner bezel, the sapphire, and the dial have that same shape. And this is important because later on the watch would be made cheaper so it could be assembled more quickly and easily. Uh, they would create a bezel, an inner bezel, a dial, and a sapphire that were circular in board. This is the original version that was tougher and more expensive to make. Now the watch includes a black lacquer dial with a biretrograde perpetual calendar system and a moon phase. You'll note Bulletin d'Observatoire. It is an observatory chronometer qualified and tested as a fully cased up watch at the French observatory in Besançon. It is also Geneva Hallmark, as you can see this Longines L990 based RD5772 movement features the Geneva Hallmark on its barrel bridge 
as well as on its base plate. We have features like rich Cote de Genève stripes, mirrored anglage on the edge of the bridges, black polished screws with chamfered slots and circumference, satination on the wheels, and engine turned perlage on the base plate. It is an automatic winder with a 44 hour power reserve. It includes a simple, no nonsense matching Roger Debris satinated and polished pin buckle. And though it is a 37, it wears large for 37 because of these expressive lugs. Think of it as more of a 40 or even a 41 and you get a good sense of what this watch brings to the table. A chronometer, French qualified, Geneva Hallmark finished, one of the earliest and most desirable of Dubuis, and of course, lucky number eight in a 28-piece limited edition, a very scarce and important piece from one of the pioneering independents of independent horology. We forget what a jump start Roger Dubuis gave to the industry before Max Busser, before Erver, before F.P. Jorn, before De Betun, before Grubel Forcey, there was Roger Dubuis. Now, speaking of Grubel Forcey, uh, this is a standout even by their standards. This one is all about the color. Visual theatrics in a watch of unimpeachable quality. This is the Tourbillon 24 Secondes Contemporain. It is the 24-second Tourbillon in its most contemporary form. So you can see the case which features the philosophy of Grubel Forcey en Francais is uh, lovely, festooned with all of that text, and then lugs that are beautifully concave in profile. So this is the French language, and it expresses how Robert Grubel and Stephen Forcey make watches. Elaboré, exclusif, bien facteur, technicité, savoir faire, notre savoir faire, our know-how, créativité, alchemy, Many different things go into this watch. Now, the dial, of course, is loomed, which is unusual for an extravagant dress watch, but this watch is a bit of a uh, category splitter. Now, you can see that the dial is basically the movement, and the movement is made of blue titanium. So, though a rose gold watch, you can see that the primary bridges and plates are made of blue titanium. Now, we have a sapphire ring, which serves as a mounting point for the hour indices, and we have the titular 24-second tourbillon inclined at 25 degrees free sprung with an overcoil hairspring. It is a true timekeeper, reviving the original purpose of Abraham Louis Breguet's tourbillon regulator, which is to even out the effect of timing created by gravity. Gravity will cause the watch to run fast, run slow, and in equal measure since the tourbillon will be continuously rotating the balance at an angle with respect to gravity. Now, the upper bridge is made of sapphire. It looks like a flying tourbillon because you could see everything unobstructed, but the bridge itself is made of sapphire. We have a conventional running seconds display and then a power reserve indicator, uh, 72 hours of power reserve, manual wind. We do have one set of bridges on the reverse side made of German silver or Maishok. Now, this is... A 33-piece limited edition in red gold. So look at the array of color we have. Fired blue screws, red gold case. We have a paler gold for the wheels themselves. We have the silver of the German silver, which is rhodium plated to give it a greater shine. And then the violet of the pivot jewels. Now you can also see that the anglage is a mile wide, that there are sharp interior angles where these bevels meet, that the surfacing of the bridges has been frosted with a wire brush. And if you look carefully, you can see that even the spokes and interior circumference of the wheels have been beveled, creating dozens of interior angles inside the wheels themselves. You will find Geneva Hallmark movements that don't include one interior angle. Grubel Forcey gives you dozens on the drivetrain wheels by themselves. As good as good gets, perhaps even as great as great gets, Grubel Forcey is the standard for finish in the industry. Others may match, but none surpass the finish of Grubel Forcey watches. And you can see this one, 44.5 millimeters in diameter includes a well-deserved full deployment clasp. You could wear it on a wrist of my size, but it's going to be big. You're going to need a wrist of at least 16 centimeters circumference to wear this watch well. That said, if your wrist is a little bit smaller or you want something less extroverted, I've got a bit of an adjustment for you and some options. Here we have the DB25 Perpetual Calendar from Debatun. Remember, there have been fewer than 3,000 Debatun watches made since the company's founding in 2002, and they're making about 200 to 220 watches a year now. This watch is the watch I always describe to people as a gateway to the brand, because if you don't like the floating lugs and open dials of the DB28s, the DB25, with its conventional case and solid dial, is often a better option. Now, Debatun, like 
FP Journe makes its own cases, dials, and movements, so they are a true manufacturer, and they insource a lot of the craft arts, like rose lathe guilloche for cutting the center dial. They do that in-house. There's a quick set system for the perpetual calendar, and it's an aperture-style perpetual. We have a pointer for the date, the day, the month, and then a little leap year phase that sits inside a fired blue plate of titanium. They have a patent for bluing titanium, and they've used it on both the hands and this little star surround, which encompasses a sphere spherical moon phase. It is a spherical moon. One half white palladium, one half blued steel, and it rotates through an adjustment interval, that is the period between corrections, of 1,112 years. The calendar, in contrast, is mechanically programmed out to the year 2100. Now, if you look carefully, you can see there's a wreath-like pattern that rings the dial, and that too is cut on a rose lathe. The dial features a disc outboard with blue on silver printing for a lovely warm contrast of colors, and then you turn it over, and this is a Debatune manufacturer caliber uh, based on their 2024 automatic, so it has a platinum mass on an exceptionally long titanium fired blue lever arm, five days of power reserve, automatic winding, there's a shock protection system for the balance, there's a one, two, three shock protection system, three springs for the balance wheel, so we've got the winding system protected, we've got the balance wheel protected by three different springs, you can see that they even included little jewels inside the cantilever springs for the winding system protection, and those jewels ensure a minimum of friction or stiction between the rotor and the shock protection springs. Now you can see with the triple parachute shock protection you gain two advantages. One is better timekeeping as it more rapidly recenters the balance staff in its pivot jewel. The other, of course, is greater durability. Look carefully and you can see one of Debatoon's patented um, shock protection, or I should say balance wheels with a combination of a titanium yoke and platinum masses. So the masses themselves are platinum bulbs. You can see them on the end of the yoke. And then the balance is a yoke. So it's not a wheel. It's non-annular. By making the balance itself out of titanium and putting platinum on the edges, Denis Flageolet, who is the watchmaker and founding partner of the company, has created the maximum polar moment possible on a balance of this size. There's also a two element hairspring that is clamped together uh, so it beats concentrically and breathes concentrically like an overcoil without the shock susceptibility or thickness of an overcoil. Now that's automatic winding, that's a five day power reserve, but you get even more with the capstone to this episode, the DB25 moon phase. Now I mentioned we have a super long duration moon phase system and we do on these watches. You can see that we have a moon here that is also spherical, but one half diamond encrusted and one half blue sapphire encrusted. Now we'll move that out of the way real quick, and you can see those blue sapphires on the spherical moon face. It has the same 1112 year adjustment interval. Let's find the intermediate position. There is a quick set for rapidly setting the moon phase display. When you find that clutch position, it allows you to rapidly set the moon. I guess I need to find that clutch in a moment. We'll go over the blued titanium disc of the dial. Adepatoon created a patent in the early 2000s for fire bluing titanium. Now remember, titanium oxidizes white. So if you oxidize titanium and get blue, that's a very different process. You can also see that there is a toroidal ring too, just like the other DB25. Here we have a 44 millimeter grade five titanium case. So this is the DB25 again, but this case, 44 millimeters is titanium. I'll do a quick wrist shot with the perpetual calendar because I realize I missed that. Uh, it's a watch that wears easily on my wrist, though I think you need a wrist of at least 15 centimeters circumference to wear it. Fun fact though, it is super slim. It's only as thick as a Rolex Daytona at 12.3 millimeters that can move away from the camera, get a better sense of proportion. It is a good looking watch. Now I'll show you that quick set system for the moon phase. 
If you want to play with the moon phase and watch it turn, you can easily do so. It's an absolute blast to play with that feature. But turn it over and the blast continues. Look at all of that black polish. All of it finished with diamond paste. Now most watches, even Geneva Hallmark watches, and I don't mean to beat up on Roger Dubuis here because Patek does the same thing, but when they give you black polished components, they're tiny components like stud holders, screw heads, or swan's neck regulator. Debatune gives you huge swaths of diamond paste polished black surfacing. Enormous. You can see they've capped the barrel bridge and they actually executed the Cote de Genève or the Cote de Batune underneath the cap. If you look carefully, you can see it's there. There's also a cap on top of the base plate. All of this black polishing frames a triple parachute shock protection system and now you can see that the balance is black polished and rounded all the way around. Here we have another balance design. This one is a full disc of silicon with a continuous white gold rim. We have twin self-adjusting barrels now with a six-day power reserve, and take note, the anglage is a mile wide. You get traditional finishing with these watches, even though the look is avant-garde, there's a very subtle up and down power reserve indicator with a blued index so you can see where the watch is. It's a manual wind watch with a six-day power reserve, a moon phase, and a power reserve indicator. It is actually a multi-complication. Now this one is 12.7 millimeters thick by 44 millimeters in diameter, and you can see it wears really nicely, comfortably, broad, and with so much luster and color. It'll never be mistaken for anything else. And Debatoon, the ultimate in discretion. Go ahead, find the branding on this watch. I defy you. This is the ultimate in collector and branding confidence. You know what it is, and the person who knows what this is is a person you're going to want to meet and befriend. A great way to build bridges among the true cognoscenti. Guys, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.